Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers. I'm going to talk about these miniatures that I painted recently. If you follow my social media channels you will have seen photos of these. And they are 34 figures from The Others by Simon, uh, which I painted recently very, very quickly. I'm quite pleased with the techniques I used to paint these really quickly and I thought I'd share some of them with you. Now I'm going to do some more videos on these techniques but I thought I'd just go through them while I was showing you these figures and uh, you can try these techniques out yourself and see if they speed up your painting. So let me get my glasses so I can see what I'm reading. First when you're preparing your figures now you, there's a few steps you can cut out to speed up your preparation steps when you're getting your figures ready. First thing is, you don't necessarily have to wash your plastic figures. You'll see in all my tutorial videos that I usually get the figures and I put them in some soapy water or detergent and give them a bit of a scrub to get any residue off from the mold making process. Now for good quality figures i found that isn't always necessary. For some it definitely is. Now it's hard to say exactly which ones need it and which ones don't, I'm not sure. But certainly for these ones, um, I just skipped the whole washing step and just primed them straight away and had no problems whatsoever. So, go figure. Perhaps you can do an experiment on a batch and see if it works alright. The only problem, ones I've had a real problem with are figures by um, Flying Frog. They often have quite a residue on them. Anyway, good quality figures. You don't have to worry about the washing step. Now another big step that takes a lot of time when you're doing your miniatures is cleaning the flash off. Um, that's the little line where the mould meets and there's sometimes a little line around the figure. Um, you can skip that step as well. If you just want to get these out quickly, this is speed painting remember, you'll find that you don't actually notice most of those little imperfections when you're playing with the figures. Now what I do these days when I want to churn out a batch really quickly is just get them ready, prime them all. I use white spray primer. I prime them all and then after they've been primed I have a look at them and if there's any really obvious flash lines then I just scrape them off. It's much easier to see which lines are going to bother you after they've been primed. Otherwise before they've been primed you clean off absolutely everything. It takes ages and you may be doing a lot of work that isn't really necessary. So you can speed it up. For these figures I didn't do any cleaning at all. Um, I just prime them, they look great, on to the next step, bang, saved a lot of time there. Now, uh, another thing of course is to do things in batches, and you'll have heard this before. What I do is I get all the miniatures, and the first thing I do is base them, put a little bit of texture on the base. Now, for this, um, I sometimes use um, ground kitty litter and all that kind of stuff. You've seen me do that before in other videos. A faster way to do it is just use Games Workshop's textured base paint and just paint it on um, each base and just get a little bit of texture. It doesn't have to cover the whole base, it just has to give an impression of texture on the base. So that's good enough. You can get all that done in one batch. Then I get my um, priming stick that you've seen before in other videos and I blue tack them to my priming stick and then I go out and spray prime them all in one go. So bang, all ready for painting. You can get that done pretty quickly. Do it in batches, do it all in one go. All the, all the texturing first, then all the priming, and then you're ready for painting. Now, the next thing to do is have a look at the miniature and see how you're going to approach the painting of it. For something large like this, I don't want sort of one colour over the whole thing because I want a little bit of variety. So what I use is a technical wet blending. And for that, I'm, I'm using basically a fleshy colour and a green colour for this miniature. And I get the flesh colour and the green colour on my wet palette and I start slapping it on as fast as I can. And where I want it to transition down to the fleshy colour, um, I just blend it very uh, roughly on the figure itself. Um, add a bit of water, just mix the colours together and you can get a really quick blend effect which looks as though you put huge amounts of effort in but actually it's really quick and easy to do. And you can do this with any figures to just sort of add a transition of colour on the figure and make it more interesting. Now for your other, other figures of course, you want to just block out the colours as fast as possible. Now when you've got a figure which has got detailed packs and backpacks and all that kind of stuff on it, all that fiddly detail that takes ages to paint, don't bother blocking all that stuff out separately. Just wash the whole area in, in one brown colour or something like that. 
if you've got, for example, um, a figure that's got a backpack and pouches and everything, paint them all in one brown colour. After you've washed it later on, you can say, okay, I might pick out that particular pouch in a different colour if you want, but I think you'll find when it's finished, you'll think, hey, that looks good enough. I don't have to worry about making a separate colour for that detail. That way you're really cutting out a lot of time picking out colours for individual little details on your miniature. So block out the figure in as few colours as possible. Just cover the whole thing with paint. Obviously you're going to have your flesh colour, um, you're going to have a, a colour for the, the, the top and the, the cloak and the pants or whatever like that. If the boots have straps and things around them and all that kind of detail, just paint it all in one colour. Paint it in a brown colour. It'll look great once you've given it a wash. Now on to washes, and they are the most wonderful part of the whole process because they make something just look fantastic straight away. So pick the right wash. You'll be using Agrax Earthshade quite a lot, that's a dark brown. Um, you could also use Seraphim Sepia, these are Games Workshop washes. You can use Seraphim Sepia for flesh because it's not quite so dark. For painting something like this which is green, I just mixed together a little bit of Seraphim Sepia with some green, so I had a sort of browny green colour. If you get a sort of appropriately coloured wash, you can save heaps of time, you just slap it all over the figure and it goes into all of the detail and all the detail comes out. If you have very detailed figures like these monsters, you'll see it brings out all the detail and you don't have to do anything, you just slap a wash over it and let it dry and it looks great. So once you're at that step, you'll look at your miniatures and think, they look pretty good. And in fact, you can just stop there if you want to. Um, of course, what I do at that stage is dry brush my base. And you'll be astounded at how much better a figure looks when you've dry brushed the base and the base is completed. Because it actually visually takes up a lot of space. So when you look at it, you notice that um, a base has been done and you may not notice that a few other details haven't been done. So do all your bases. Once you're at that stage, you've got basic colours down, you've got a wash, you've done your bases, you could stop there and you'll save a lot of time and your miniatures will still look good on the tabletop. Remember you're seeing them from a distance, you're not seeing them right up close when you're playing with them, you're seeing them down here. But I like to do one pass over that and do some more detail. And with that, I concentrate on areas that are going to lift the miniature and make it pop a little bit more. The face is an important thing. If you pick out the teeth, you could do, if the mouth is open, for example, you could do a dark colour like black or dark brown around the mouth and then pick out the teeth with a very fine brush. Just go beep, 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 pick out the teeth. You could do the eyes, their little details, and then you can do selected highlighting. You don't have to highlight everything on the miniature. You just have to stick to areas that are really going to catch the light. So if you're doing the face, you can do the end of the nose, a couple of highlights here, maybe on the brow, on the chin. That's all you need, very quickly. Um, if you're doing hands, you just highlight the knuckles because that's where the light catches and it makes the hands sort of lift out of the miniature. Um, if you are doing highlights on cloth, you can do it just at the top of the miniature, so just around the shoulders and everything. Don't worry about down near the feet or anything like that. That would stay in darkness anyway. You don't have to worry about it. Just make the top half of the miniature lift a little bit with highlights. If you have a voluminous cloak with lots of folds, you can dry brush a highlight onto it. So pick a lighter colour than your cloak colour, get it onto a square brush and just dry brush a highlight across the top and that'll lift up the fold. Again, don't worry about down near the bottom and down the feet. So, quick highlights. And here's one final tip. Stop when it looks good. Don't worry about painting everything. Don't worry about painting all the detail. If you look at the miniature and you think, you know, that looks pretty good, I'm happy with that. Just stop. You don't have to paint everything on a miniature. You don't have to pick out every little piece of detail. You don't have to highlight every pouch or shoe or everything. You just have to do enough to make it look good from a bit of a distance. That's all you need to do. So by that stage you'll have figures that you haven't agonized over individual bits of detail. What you've done is just put down base colors, you've given it a wash, you've picked out a few details and you've maybe done a little bit of highlighting and they'll look as good as this because that's all I did with these miniatures and to me they look like finished paint jobs. Now if I study them I can see areas where I've skipped detail and I haven't bothered to 
pick out a few details and individual colors and everything, but it's only if I study them. I'm playing with these, they'll look great on the table and I'll enjoy using them and I can get on to the next thing. These are all done, on to the next project. That way, I managed to do this whole batch of 34 figures in one evening and one afternoon, and they were done. So that's it folks, uh, thanks very much for watching this video. I'm going to do more videos on this subject in the future because I think it's really interesting and I'm really happy with the way I'm tuning through my figures and getting a bit of backlog um, out of the way. I have a lot of unpainted miniatures in the boxes on these shelves and I really want to get them done and uh, this te technique is working well for me. So I hope you enjoy the upcoming videos. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for supporting the Esoteric Order of Gamers. I'll see you next time.